I've always considered myself an ordinary girl. I'm one of those people who produce little or nothing. I tend to go unnoticed on the street because no one looks at me long enough to notice me. Maybe that's why I was so surprised when Ethan took an interest in me. Ethan is a tan, tall, muscular man. He comes from a family with a lot of money and dresses very well. He's the kind of guy that when you see him on the street, you think he's unreachable. Honestly, this is not my type of guy, but when he approached me to talk at a party, I must admit I was very intrigued by his mysterious and seductive personality. We quickly started dating, and within two months we became a couple. Little by little, he allowed me to become a part of his world. He told me that he had just gotten out of a long relationship and convinced me to learn how to play tennis. I paid more attention to how I dressed and started putting on makeup. I even dyed my hair blonde, something I never would have imagined doing at the time. But I did it because Ethan liked it. My friends told me that I was becoming more and more distant from them, that they didn't like Ethan, and that they thought I would never be that vain. Their claims seemed ridiculous to me. Caring more about my appearance didn't make me a worse person. After a few months, we were a stable, established couple. The day it all happened, I gave in to accompanying him to the tanning salon. I had never been there before and was a little uncomfortable, but I decided to do it for him. Babe, are you really that scared? It's just a tanning salon. It's not like you are getting a tattoo or anything. I know. I'm just a little uncomfortable. I never thought I'd come in here. After a while, you'll get used to it. Believe me. It's very relaxing. When we entered, we were attended by a girl who seemed to know Ethan. She led us to a somewhat secluded room where there were two tanning beds. We left our belongings to one side, and the girl left us alone. Okay, here goes nothing. That's the attitude. I got into the tanning bed, and I must admit, it felt pretty good. I started to relax and lay there for a while. I felt like I could fall asleep. As I was relaxing, I remembered it was my nephew's birthday, so I got out of the bed to write him a quick text and then come back. After grabbing my cell phone and sending the message, I saw a notification from my best friend, and out of curiosity, I opened it. When I read what she wrote and the pictures she sent me, I was filled with anger. Furious, I hit Ethan's tanner, and when it opened, I confronted him. What happened, babe? What the hell, Ethan? Hey, hey, slow down. What the hell is this? It's my ex, Linda. What's up with that? What's up with that? You are such a jerk. You made me dye my hair like hers. You made me wear her same style of clothes, her makeup. Linda, you're going crazy. It's just a coincidence. Coincidence? She's a damn tennis instructor, Ethan. You didn't even know how to play tennis when you first took me there. Hey! Stop yelling! You're gonna embarrass me! Embarrass you? You went out with me just because I look like your ex! You're a psycho! That's why you were never interested in my stuff! Do you think I'm a blank vessel that you can just mold to your liking? Ethan's calm personality changed in an instant. Without my expecting it, he grabbed me by the neck with one hand and spoke to me angrily, like I had never seen him before. No, Linda. You're not a vessel. You're a poor, dirty girl with no family and friends and with no brain cells. Before you met me, you had no future, and you weren't going to have one. You should feel grateful that I noticed you. That, for some crazy reason, I think you look even the slightest bit like my ex. You are sick! <laughs> with all my strength, I managed to kick him in the crotch and started to run. I let out a little scream, but before I even got to the door, Ethan grabbed me by the hair and pulled me back. Let me go! Help! He quickly covered my mouth and with all his strength, grabbed me with one hand and locked me in his tanning bed. You know what? I consider forgiving you even after the embarrassment you put me through, but you're still not tan enough, like her. From inside the bed, I heard a few beats and suddenly, I started to feel very hot. This was not the same heat I felt before. It was much more intense. 
He surely had it turned up to the max. I kept banging on the door with all my might, begging for someone to come and rescue me, but it was useless. Breathing became more and more difficult, and my skin was burning. I was desperately crying. Everything that touched me was hot as hell, and because Ethan held the door of the machine, I couldn't escape. I felt like I was going to suffocate to death. In my worst moment of desperation, the door opened and I fell to the floor, where I began to roll around in pain. The girl who had attended to us was looking at me, crying. A few meters away, there were four men trying to stop Ethan, who was looking at me rabidly. That man looked like he was about to explode with rage. He seemed to be able to dispatch those four men, and ten more, but luckily that didn't happen. Other men arrived and held him until the police came. I didn't see the moment they took him away, as the ambulance arrived first and took me to the hospital. I had second-degree burns and respiratory complications. Although after a month I had improved, I was told that I would need surgery to get my skin back to the way it looked before. In the meantime, I refused all attempts to negotiate with Ethan's lawyers. I was ready to take that man to trial for attempted murder and have him arrested, and I had the witnesses for that. Meanwhile, I had gone back to the way I was before, carefree and more confident. I still dress fashionably, put on makeup and play tennis, things I really like to do. But now I do it because I like it and not because of the strange obsession of a millionaire psycho who almost killed me. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. My best friend Harper and I went to the Bahamas and got caught up in bad weather. Feeling bored, Harper took me to this tanning salon, located near a straw market inside a narrow alley. The shop was really old and needed maintenance. As we entered, we found it empty and started looking around for its owner. Hello, is anybody here? Harper called out, but no one responded. We were checking the shop out when I felt a breath on my shoulder. Hello there! <laughs> <gasps> I backed out, seeing this sketchy guy appear from nowhere. The man smiled and said, Didn't mean to scare you, madam. Welcome to Sunray's Tanning Salon. Um, this is your shop? Yes, madam. Are you looking for an appointment? Yeah, for me and my friend here. Very good. Very good. May I ask, where are you from? California. Why? Just my curiosity. Please, come with me. The man escorted us to the hallway, and Harper and I exchanged a worried look. I don't like him at all. Well, we're not here to date him, so shut up. As usual, Harper shut me up, and the man took us to a room. He opened the door and gestured for us to go in. There. These are our tanning beds. Are you familiar with using one? Yeah. Very good. Very good. Then set your favorite temperature, close the lid... And you will be baking in the sun. <laughs> there were two tanning beds, side by side, in the room. Finally! Saying this, Harper tied her hair into a bun and lay inside the tanning bed, wearing her bikini. I was still suspicious about everything, so I decided to keep an eye out by waiting for Harper to finish first. I didn't know why it didn't feel right to me. As soon as Harper closed the lid... Smoke started filling the room. Oh my god! <laughs> what is this? Wh what's happening? I rushed toward Harper's tanning bed and lifted the lid up, but by that time, the room was filled with smoke. I started coughing terribly. The smoke made my eyes and nose burn. Slowly, my head started to feel heavy. I immediately realized this was all a trap. Harper was already passed out as the gas hit her right away, and I too was falling into a trance. I covered my mouth with my hands, trying my best not to breathe in the gas anymore. My legs began to shake, and I fell to the floor. 
but I didn't faint yet. The smoke stopped after a few more seconds, and I was still conscious, just too drowsy to move my arms and legs. I understood the gas was a weapon to make women faint inside this tanning salon, so that sketchy man could carry on whatever evil intentions he was hiding. Footsteps started approaching the room as I lay on the floor with my unconscious friend. Madam! <laughs> Are you sleeping already? The man peeked in and saw me on the floor. I quickly closed my eyes so he would think I had fainted too. He came close to me and started dragging me out of the room, grabbing my legs. Your white skin is so valuable, madam. Please, don't mind. This is just how I earn my bread. So many wackos are eager to pay high price for your shiny white skin. And look at you dumb witches, going to tanning salons to ruin that. Not on my watch. <laughs> this man was a total nut job. He kept saying all this to me thinking I couldn't hear him. After dragging me down the hallway, he stopped in front of the counter. Realizing this was my opportunity, I grabbed the metal vase from the corner and somehow picked up my half-awake and half-paralyzed body. I was still feeling numb in one leg, so I kind of limped towards the man to knock him out when something hit me hard on the back of my head. Oh! Hello, bestie. Harper, I, I thought you fainted too. No, I didn't. I just held my breath, that's all. <laughs> I fell to the ground in complete shock. Harper was standing right behind me with a metal rod in her hand. The man too turned around to find me and Harper behind him. I didn't pay you or come all this way so you could let this witch escape. What the hell were you doing? She was all set to bash you from behind. I'm, I'm sorry, madam. I was just looking for the basement keys. That's where I operate, so... Get the keys, you moron! Uh, Harper, what's happening here? You know this man? Oh, don't be so surprised, Luna. I made a deal with this freak. Deal? Wh what kind of deal? That I was going to lure you to him, and he'll sell your skin on the dark web. <laughs> He's been doing this for years now. How stupid of you to believe I was actually taking you to a tanning salon. <laughs> but... But you're my best friend. Why are you doing this to me? Really? Are we best friends, Luna? Then why the hell did you sleep with my Josh at the Christmas party, huh? Why, you witch? Saying this, Harper slapped me hard on my cheek. A shiver ran down my spine as I realized this was all my doing. Karma is real, and I am being punished for backstabbing my own best friend. Uh, I'm sorry, Harper, but, but trust me, it was just one time. We were drunk. It didn't mean anything. I never spoke to him after that, I swear. I don't care. I would never have done this to you, Luna. Never in my life. Found it. Madam, here's the keys. The basement. The man handed Harper the key. She told him to lock the main door from the inside. The man did exactly what she said. Then they started dragging me to the basement. I cried, screamed, and tried to free myself from their grasp, but they were more prepared than me. The basement had an operating table and a bunch of surgical tools lying near it on a table. I knew my time had come, and no one could get me out of this situation, except myself. Please, Harper, let me go. I promise I'll disappear from your life. You'll never have to see my face, please. I won't be seeing your face anyway, witch. Saying this... She told the man to grab my hands tightly while she went to get a knife to silence me forever. <laughs> you are the prettiest white girl. I will be skinning alive. He grinned while scaring the hell out of me. But I was adamant too. I definitely had made a mistake. But I was also not ready to pay such a high price. I lunged at the man and bit his wrist. She bit me! She bit me! He immediately let go of me, and I ran for the basement door. Don't let her run away! I heard Harper scream, but I closed the basement door before either of them could come out. 
Luckily, Harper had left the key in the door, so I locked them in. They started banging on the door and cursing me, but I ran. I ran for my life. I got upstairs and executed this perfect plan. I turned all the tanning beds in each room to their highest temperatures so they would eventually blow up. Then I waited in the alley for the salon to catch fire. It eventually did. The fire spread all over, even to the basement, and that's when I began hearing two screaming voices. Once they faded away, I ran out to the street, screaming for help. The employees of the two or three shops that were still open came rushing out and called the fire department. No one doubted me for a second, as I already had scratches on my body and a wound at the back of my head. I told the cops about the psycho man and how he drugged me and my best friend so he could sell our skins on the dark web. The cops found enough evidence against him and were able to link him with a few missing person cases of tourists. My family and the world believe I was the lucky one who lived, and for Harper, it just wasn't her lucky day. My mom and dad had the perfect love story to begin with. They met during high school, fell in love, went to prom, and got married as well. But after I was born, things fell apart. One night, my mom and I came home from the mall earlier than we anticipated and heard sounds in the upstairs bedroom. Thinking someone had broken to our house, we went upstairs. As my mom opened the door, she found my dad secretly cheating on her with his secretary, Brenda. Being caught red-handed, both of them got embarrassed and highly awkward. I still remember my mom's reaction. She was silent and calm, yet her eyes were filled with pain. Tears rolled down them eventually, but not a single cry came out of her mouth. My dad left the house and us the very next morning. But since that night, my mom changed forever. I don't know why she started to hate herself, especially the color of her skin. She would stand in front of the mirrors for hours and stare at herself with a freaky face. I even woke up one night and came downstairs to get water. I heard the kitchen tap running, but as I entered, I saw my mom washing her hands vigorously. She was scrubbing her skin with sharp fingernails. Mom! What? What are you doing? Eddie, I don't understand why my skin is so pale. I mean, I want it to turn chocolatey smooth, just like hers. Like whom? What are you talking about? Like Brenda. I want skin like her. I want skin like her. Mumbling this same line over and over. My mom made her way back to her room, and I realized what changed. Brenda was an African-American woman, and my mom thought if she could change herself to look like Brenda, my dad might come back to her. But to do that, she went to extremes. Within the next few weeks, she started eating charcoal with every meal. Yes, my mom literally ate ashes. She would mix that in her soup, apply that to her toast like jam, her tongue turned black during this process, and within the next few days, she got very sick. When the charcoal didn't work, she started coloring herself with paint, but nothing could make her skin dark permanently. One day, on our way to home from the local grocery store, we saw an advertisement for a tanning place that just opened down the block. All hell broke loose. My mom started going to the tanning salon every week. I remember the first day she came home after tanning her skin. A creepy, slick smile hung on her lip, as if she had finally achieved something. Her skin was copper red as she watched herself in front of the mirror for hours. She even sang to herself like a nine-year-old child. I look so pretty. I look so pretty. <laughs> Slowly, her tanning appointments started to increase. She would go to the tanning salon almost every other day, and due to this, her skin started losing its natural texture. Not just that, she started having irritation on her skin. One morning, I woke up hearing the sound of her crying, so I went to her room and knocked on the door. Mom! Mom, are you okay? <laughs> Mom, is, is everything all right? No, Eddie, I have blisters all over my body. They're popping and it's painful, oh God. 
I have done nothing wrong. Why are you punishing me? Suddenly, her crying changed into a weird thudding noise. I couldn't keep calm and opened the door to check on her. My mom was behaving totally crazy. She was banging her head on the wall like some lunatic. Her body was filled with rashes and scratches. It seemed she vigorously scratched herself with her fingernails out of the skin irritation. What are you doing? I ran towards her and grabbed her shoulders to pull her away from the wall. She turned her face towards me and what I saw gave me goosebumps. Her face was horrible. Excessive tanning had blemished her skin. She had lumps and dark spots all over her face. Chunks of skin were peeling off her cheek, revealing the red, sensitive, fleshy layer underneath. It was as if my mom suffered a severe burn. What have you done to your face? Stop trying to be like Brenda. You are losing it, Mom. Hearing Brenda's name from my mouth, her face changed. Her eyes ignited with anger, and she kept staring at me without even blinking. Feeling creeped out by her evil stare, I screamed again. What? Talk to me. Don't be like this for a man who never cared about you. My mom slapped me right across my cheek, which I didn't see coming. Shut up. Don't talk about your dad like that. We were high school sweethearts. I was the first woman in his life. You know nothing, Eddie. He loves me more than anyone else. He's just a little lost because that witch Brenda is controlling his mind. I'm going to teach that hag a lesson, I swear. Saying this, she took her coat and left the house. As I stood there, shocked and broken, I could see my family reaching the end. Since I was a kid, my mom never laid her hands on me. Even if I got scolded by dad, she was the only one who loved me and cared for me, no matter what. But that day, she slapped me and didn't even feel bad about it. Her infuriating obsession with my dad's mistress turned her into a completely different person. Feeling shattered, I went for a ride on my bike to clear my mind. I decided I will not come home until my mom gives me a call. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And when it was around 11 p.m. at night, I returned home. As soon as I entered the house, I could smell gasoline. God, Mom, what are you up to now? I realized the smell was coming from our basement. I rushed through the stairs and immediately froze in fear. Brenda was tied to a chair, and my mom was showering her with gasoline. She was pouring cans of flammable liquid all over Brenda's body. Please, let me go. I promise I'll leave your husband and you'll never see me again. (laughs) It's a little too late for that, Brenda. You've ruined my life, and now it's payback time. Holy crap! Mom! Get out of here, Eddie. Don't try to stop me now. This witch has destroyed our family. I will have my revenge. She punched Brenda, bruising her eye. Brenda started crying now, but my mom grinned watching her being so miserable like that. She took out a lighter and said, Now you'll be ashes in no time. I hate you, Brenda, and I hate the skin you wear. I'm going to kill you, and then my love will come back to me. Everything will be all right. No, stop! I jumped and grabbed her hand to take the lighter away. My mom kept screaming. Let me go, Eddie. This witch is going to die tonight. Let me go. For God's sake, stop this madness. Enough. We started struggling. My mom put all her strength to free her hands from my grasp, but I snatched the ladder right away, and just then, I heard the sirens of the cop cars. My dad came to the basement with two cops. Everyone was relieved to find out Brenda was alive and that my mom wasn't a murderer after all. The cops arrested my mom and rescued Brenda. Even though I saved my dad's mistress, I couldn't save my mom. After innumerable charges, such as kidnapping and an attempt to murder, the state decided to put my mom in a mental institution. Brenda left the country, and my dad went with her too. I realized you can never force someone to care for and to love you. I visit my mom in the mental institution Every week, she is totally a lost case now. She walks around in her tiny cell, scratching her head and looking at her arms and legs, deliberately 
rubbing her skin as if she is desperate to get out of her own body. 